Welcome back to another episode of On Shape. We're going to learn how to insert a drawing into your part studio, specifically into a sketch, and then also how you can uh, adjust the angle or transform the positioning of text that you've inserted so that it isn't just horizontal. Okay. Uh, so you can see here I've got a little, uh, looks like a Viking logo with my name kind of angled down. And uh, if we start a new part studio, okay. I'm going to start a new sketch on the front plane. Press N to look uh, normal to it. And then <clears throat> I want to insert a picture. Now it's up uh, next to the uh, transformations and the patterning tools. If you click on the drop down, you should see insert DXF or DWG. I want to insert an image. So I'm going to select insert image. Yours will be blank. Mine has already something in it because I've already imported some. So you want to import. And this lets you select any picture from your um, computer. So you can select your Viking logo and click open. And it'll. However, you know, and then you can add the dimensions to that. Say you want your picture to be around you know, 50 millimeters wide, you can do that. And it sizes appropriately. Okay. All right. So now let's zoom in how to use this. Because we can't just extrude this. If you notice, we finish our sketch and we try to extrude. There's nothing here. There's no shape okay, for us to extrude. So what we have to do is we have to create this shape. You, and the best way to do this is to use the spline tool. So select your spline tool. And then, and it's best to zoom in because you're going to want to place a lot of points. Start placing points. And then again, the more you zoom in, the better your curvature will be. And you can see I'm slowly tracing around the outside. OK, and now you can see I've traced all the way around here. Make sure when you do your spline that you connect it back to the beginning. Notice the outline in yellow is a closed shape. That's important for your extrusion. And then I also went ahead and I uh, traced around the individual horn and the hair and the mustache and the eyebrows because I want to extrude those at a separate depth so I get a uh, uh, my face to pop out. Okay, You don't have to do that. You can just trace the outline and extrude the outline itself. Uh, but I think you get a nicer effect when you have a different depth to your extrusion. Okay, so, and then uh, those other splines that I added on, uh, I also made sure they were closed shapes as well. So let's finish that sketch. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to extrude. And I want to uh, first, I'm going to do a symmetric extrude of 4 millimeters. Okay. Uh, just the, the body here and the little chin. Okay. So right now they're going to be two separate parts. Um, Okay, so I've got a little symmetric extrude here. Because I want to extrude the horn and the hair and the eyebrow and the mustache to a uh, thicker extrusion, also symmetric. So that way, it pops out on both sides. Okay, Now, I can't see the sketch that I want to reuse, so I'm going to click on the eye here to make that sketch reappear so I can use it again. So I'm going to select extrude. And this time, I'm going to do a symmetric extrude of 8 millimeters so that it pops out four more. Um, or two more on each side, sorry, because the main extrusion is four, so at least four over and split evenly, that's two on each side. So now I need to select the horn and the hair and the mustache and the eyebrow. And I don't want to make a new, notice it's trying to make all those new parts. I want to add that and select for my merge scope, part one, 
and part two. And notice when I do that, everything merges together into one solid part, which is exactly what I want. Okay. So there, you can't see it. I have to turn off the sketch so you can see. So now you can see I've got this Viking uh, looking guy here. And notice on both sides, he pops out. That's because I did that symmetric extrusion. Notice it pops out evenly on both sides. That's the key thing. That's why that symmetric extrusion is so powerful. You can have a two-sided figure. It's easy to locate a center. OK, so now I want to put my name, but I don't want it going across. I kind of want it going down. So I, I'm going to choose this surface here to start a sketch. Let's press N to look normal to it. And I'm going to choose my text box here. OK, I'm going to put that there. Type in Killa K. I'm going to make it bold there. All right, right there. And that's a little bit small. I don't want it that small. I want it a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I am going to grab this point, and I'm going to snap it to an edge here. And then when I, it's constrained, it lets me shrink it up. So there is that. Now I want to rotate it. So the rotation tool is here where the linear pattern, circular pattern, and transform tools are. So I'm going to select Transform. And I'm going to select this bottom edge. And notice it places this little diagram. Okay, You can use this square to move your box around. You can use the arrow to move it strictly vertically. Or the horizontal arrow to move it horizontal. But if I want to rotate it, I grab this little circle handle. Now notice the center of the diagram is right here, so it's going to rotate around that point. If I want to rotate, say, around this point, I just move the diagram there. And now I just move it and then click. And there is my name. Okay, right there. And then I can select Done. And then I'm going to engrave that into the surface. So I'm going to do a little remove. 0.8 millimeters is good. And I'm going to select my name. And boom. So now you can see I've engraved my name, angled it on the surface of this uh, part.